Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Andy Galpin and this is 5 Minute Biz. It's really important that we end the conversation of labeling exercises as bad. Right? This actually leads to a lot of confusion and it takes a tool out of the potential toolbox. So if we look at a picture like this, and you see a bunch of different exercises and depending on what seminar or clinic you went to, you might hear a particular coach say something like, you should absolutely never, ever, ever do this exercise, it's bad for you. And I think that's tremendously short-sighted. In fact, it does a disservice to the field as, in, as a whole. So if we take a look at any of those pictures, and if I started this video off by having you look at those and say, okay, which one of these is bad for you? Well, depending on who's looking at it, an athletic trainer or a different strength coach with a different philosophy, you may get a combination of different answers. For example, if you look at the, the individual in the middle here who's doing the, the rounded deadlift, well, now most of us are going to be in agreement if you were to actually lift the weight like that, especially that heavy of a weight, it's probably going to be bad for him. But on the, the, more towards the middle of the spectrum, I think is where the most of the confusion lies. And you may hear things like, um, you know, front squat's bad for you. And even now people are really excited about talking about, oh, you should never do crunches. It's absolutely bad for your back. You should absolutely never, never, never. Well, anytime we're talking about things on that level of an extreme, you know you're going to have a problem. So it's, I think it's unproductive to say exercises are absolutely out of the equation and you can never do them, and more beneficial to talk about, well, when is this a risk, or how is this a risk, and how can it be helpful? And that's what I want to do a little bit of today. So as I'm going through this next section, I want you to picture any of these exercises or any other exercise in mind that you've been told is bad for you, or maybe you yourself actually think is bad and that no one should ever do. So there's no bad exercises, there's only bad applications of exercises. And I have ver four very specific criteria that I feel like fall into the application that can make a exercise bad or harmful in this case. And that's generally improper application in four forms, either too much volume, intensity, complexity, and or technique. Now a lot of the times those first three problems can induce the last one. So for example, maybe doing front squats is not a problem, but if you did 6,000 front squats a day, that's potentially a problem. But I would say don't blame that on the front squat. Don't call it a bad exercise or it's harmful. I would say you did far too many repetitions of it, and that's your fault, or your trainer's fault, or your coach's fault. The same thing with intensity, for example. Doing a front squat's not bad for you, but doing a front squat too heavy especially if it elicits or induces a breakdown of technique, well, again, don't blame the exercise. Blame the person prescribing it or the person executing it. But that doesn't mean we throw out the front squat for everybody who ever, who's ever going to use it again, or even for the rest of the team, or even for that person. We just make sure that we're prescribing it properly. So if we go back to our original images, and we went through any one of these exercises, um, we'll just take uh, the overhead handstand push-up. Okay, so is an overhead press a bad exercise? Well, because actually that's what that individual in that picture is doing. He's just doing an overhead press. He happens to just be doing it upside down. And if I ask you, all right, everybody take your hands like that, put a pencil in your hand, and lift it up. I don't think anyone would call that a bad exercise. Well, it's the same damn thing. What makes it bad is if you did too many repetitions of it, or you did it too frequently. If you do overhead pressing four days a week, Oh, and you're also throwing a javelin four days a week or something else, it's the volume of that movement that gets you. It's not the movement itself. So if you just reduce the volume or the frequency, you'd be fine. In that case as well, some of us can do overhand push-ups like that, no problem. But if the movement itself is too heavy, if it represents too high of a percentage of our pressing strength and it becomes too intense, then maybe we have some problems. It's maybe simply too complex as well. So I took a basic overhead pressing movement and I made it extremely complex by making you do it upside down. Or again, any of those, or independently, just breakdowns of techniques, so one elbow bang out, rotating of the shoulders forward, whatever else is a problem, those can cause issues with that overhead pressing movement, but it's not the fault of the exercise, it's the fault of the person either programming it or the person executing it. So the key point here, 
No exercise is permanently off limits. I will grant you, if you're coaching, say, a bunch of middle school players, you may say, hey, look, I'm not going to do overhead standing or, or upside down overhead pressing because I can't control a room of 35 people at a time. I get it, no problem. That doesn't mean we walk around telling people never under any, under any circumstances should a high school kid ever overhead press or whatever else. So no exercise is permanently off limits, though we may choose to use some of them a little bit more selectively than others. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time.